My name is Keely, and I host a true crime and paranormal podcast called Missy Mysteries. Missy Mysteries takes a special focus on unsolved cases and missing persons cases. All of my true crime episodes are made in hopes to raise awareness and bring justice to those who need it most. Most of these episodes are made in partnership or made with the families of the victims and missing people. But the podcast isn't always true crime. Sometimes I bring spooky content like hauntings, aliens, and cryptids, such as the original story of The Conjuring House, The Life of Ed and Lorraine Warren, and Mothman. True Crime and Paranormal even cross at times to make two-part episodes like The Bobby Mackey Music World, The Lizzie Borden House, and The Velisca Axe Murder House. Misty Mysteries is ready to be binge listened to with over 50 episodes anywhere you get your podcasts. I cannot wait to keep you company whenever and wherever you like to listen to your podcast. Darkcast Network, indie pods with a dark side. got a little cold there for a second hello hello well bring your happy ass over hello and welcome to another episode of all hallows eve podcast i'm kathy i'm reagan and i'm jason and we got a weird setup going on right now so uh, it's been one of those weeks just saying so how was your week good <laughs> okay <laughs> good <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> Do anything fun this week? Yes. We watched a movie. Madagascar. <laughs> Madagascar? Three. Okay. Where at? At school. Yeah. What else did you do at school this week? Um, I don't know. We. Oh, we didn't have an <laughs> art thing or anything like oh, that? Oh, yeah. yeah. We had an art family night. Family yeah. art night. Yeah. We got to come in and see your art. And... Yeah. I watch Daddy make popcorn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. So. I know. Yeah, yeah this is a vocal that they can't watch. So. I and know. Did you just have a slumber party? Oh, yeah. I had a sleepover at my friend's house. You're getting ready to go to another friend's house. Yeah. 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 Busy preteen years. So, we spent six hours yesterday recording an episode with a couple of friends of ours from the podcast Today We Laughed and Learned, Chris and Deb over there, and uh, I woke up this morning to go edit it, and it was gone. I don't know what happened. I have no stinking clue. Did the cat touch it? I don't know. I know we were having an issue with the cat yesterday being on my computer. Yeah. So I'm not blaming it on the cat. <laughs> but he's blaming it on the cat. But I'm blaming it on the cat because I don't know where that file went. And I feel terrible about it because we legit spent six hours recording. And they have ours, but we don't have theirs. And I feel terrible about it. And I reached out and I told Chris and Deb about it. And we will be recording that again, hopefully sometime in the near future. Um, once we get all the bugs figured out and everything else, because uh, that it really turned out good. I really liked that episode that we did with them, oh, I did too. and I'm really like I'm I'm more pissed at myself that it's missing and I can't find it, which means it probably got deleted somewhere. And I was really proud of that episode. It was a lot of fun to record. I'm glad that they got their episode out of it. And they will still get to re- do a release, so scoot over and listen to theirs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We will be on their podcast this week. Um, their podcast drops Thursdays, and uh, we will be over on their show. And I believe, what was it? It was Interesting Facts from Where 
each one of us came from. So I'm originally from Michigan. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kathy, you did one here about Janesville, Mm -hmm. right? And then uh, Chris did one on Boston or a town close to Boston. And then uh, Deb did one from Ottawa, right? Yeah, it was Ottawa. Yep, it was Ottawa. Um, So... It was really interesting because we're all from so such totally different areas, and to learn the cult, some of the culture and and uh, the, history. the history and why Canadians are considered the nicest people in the world. <laughs> so, when you get a chance on Thursday, because their episodes drop on Thursday, I told her I said, "Go ahead and release yours. We'll figure out ours sometime in the near future. We'll get together again. We'll redo it and." Uh, get over there listen to them and see what they got to offer and uh it was a blast we had we had a lot of fun yesterday we had a lot of of fun um so we scrambled a little bit to figure out today's episode but we'll we'll adapt (laughs) yeah we're getting pretty good at uh overcoming and adapting with this podcast so (laughs) it's it's one of those things we're gonna do we're going to use what we had originally used for an episode with Chris and Deb. And when we get together and do our collaboration with them, we'll just find new stories yeah, for yeah. our half of it. Yep. We're just going to utilize what we had already done so we could still yes. do our podcast today. Yep, we had to get something out today and we figured, well, might as well, we already have our research for it, might as well use it. It's just, eh. It stinks. It, I this whole situation just, eh, it is what it is, right? It's called a learning lesson. Yep, yep. Make sure you edit when your head says edit it, because I was gonna do it yesterday and I didn't. So, all right. Anyway, we will get into our news this week with our new uh, sidekick. uh yeah, <laughs> is sidekick <laughs> or uh, our our new anchor woman. Why? Our new anchor girl. Kathy had the pink slip handed to her by Reagan, and she took over. So You're the one who does the news, so you got the pink slip. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got the pink slip. That's all right. At least it ain't a brown slip. Ew. Ew. What? So, <laughs> all right, Reagan, go ahead and knock yourself out. What do you got for news this week? A Michigan man searches for answers after a couple takes over custom mailbox. Dom Paul... Powell opened his mailbox one day last August and found, along with it, the usual mix of bills and co- pizza coupons, two small dolls sitting on a miniature couch near a tiny table. In his mailbox? Yeah. Oh. And his mailbox is big. Oh, keep going. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. The pair and their f- furniture came with a note. We do, we've decided to live here. Mary and S- Shelley. Powell, fir- Wait, what? Powell first thought the wooden figurines a man and a woman were put in his mailbox by mistake. He wondered if someone in the neighborhood was playing a joke. He and his wife, Nancy, ordered a cons- custom mailbox after m- moving to into their orchard-like home about five years ago. At 26 inches deep, the mailbox was designed to look like Powell's house home. It features a spacious interior with with an open floor plan and plenty of windows to let in natural light. Solar-powered ceiling lights illuminated the mailbox at night while it was it while it is against the law for someone other than a, than the mailbox owner and the mail carrier to put items in a mailbox powell could see why a doll family might want to move in right being 26 inches long i'd move into it for pete's sake me too <laughs> You are 26 inches long. Go ahead. Yeah. (laughs) He was amused, but his first thought was to 
evict the couple and their belongings into the garbage can. But then, struck by a change of heart, he pushed the couple and their belongings to the back of the mailbox and went about his business. That was just the beginning of the story. When Powell was it looking, someone dropped off a dog for the couple living in the mailbox, along with a rug and even some art for the wall. Then came a four-postered bed. I thought, okay, someone is really playing a joke on me, Powell said, admitting that by this time he was immersed in man- enamored. I can't say it anymore. <laughs> enamored? Enamored. I'm not even going to try. Never mind. By the situation and wanted to have some fun with it. I didn't think it was my neighbors. The whole thing got rather whimsical, he said. I have a quirky scene of humor. Sense of form- humor. Oh, my God. Right. Can't read. Right? <laughs> a little rough at friggin' 1 o'clock in the afternoon, huh? After waking up at noon. Nine. No, eight. Okay, fine. Seven. 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 I woke up at seven something. Well, was it nine, eight, or seven? No, seven. One of these things just don't belong here. <laughs> Go ahead. When Halloween rolled around, Mary and Shelley were mysteriously, mystery, mis, mysteriously replaced by two dolls in skeleton costumes around... Around Christmas, Mary and Shelley reappeared with miniature-sized gifts for their mailbox home. Powell took pictures and documented it all on ne- next door. Many posters, he said, were leaving comments and sending Powell messages asking for the next installment. At some point, a second mysterious note appeared claiming... The Mary, the Mary, and Shelley dolls formerly lived in a two-story Dutch-style house, but had decided Powell's mailbox house was more accommodating for their cous- cousin Shirley, a third figurine with a broken leg, who sometimes visited the couple. So you had Mary, Shelley, and Shirley. Yep. Okay. <laughs> In the beginning, Powell said he was worried the mail carrier would stop delivering the mail. Given the large size of the mailbox space has not been an issue. Meanwhile, his li- wife, wife, his, meanwhile, his li- wife, wife, keep saying wife, Nancy, wow. like, Go to bed and try again, right? (laughs) Yeah. Nancy said she's been enjoying the SAG saga, whatever, and likes to see when new things are added to the mailbox, but doesn't get as worked up about it as her husband. It's very cute, she said. I get a laugh out of it. It's a good, positive thing, especially during these crazy times. Powell said, said no new furniture or other items have arrived in the last month or so. Still, at this point, he is not sure he's ready to learn the true identity of the person who brought Mary and Shelley into his life. I'm kind of, I'm kind, kind of, kind of enjoying the mystery, he said. I look forward to to new things being added to the mailbox. So somebody is just randomly going through and giving him these things in this mailbox? Yes. And he's leaving it in the mailbox? Yes, because he likes it, and he doesn't want to give it up because then he feels like he's not going to get any more. Huh. That is strange. Why would you do... Like, it's just... It's strange. I think it would be a lot of fun. Huh. I've never heard of anything like that happening. No, but I have seen where people have taken like dolls, creepy looking dolls, and put them on their neighbor's step and put a note on it saying, it's your turn now. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that before. Well, yeah. this is a kind along the same line, but... 
in your mailbox. In a fun way. There's nothing mean or malicious about it. The guy's actually thinking about writing a children's story about this family that's moved into his mailbox. That is a good basis or premise for a story, I guess. The mailbox really is really big. He actually works... 26 inches. That's a big-ass mailbox. Well, it sounds like he gets special deliveries because um, he's a CEO of the Farmington Hills-based American Institute for Preventative Medicine. Okay. okay. So he gets a lot of packages yeah. delivered to the house, so he needs a larger mailbox to yep. accommodate. Yeah. Um, and it just sounds like this family now lives in the back of his mailbox. Hmm. Creepy. Yeah, interesting. I got to find a mailbox big enough to do this to. No, I'm not putting a mailbox up. No, not. Point. I don't want to do it in our mailbox, although that would be fun too. Because I surely would be decorating it for every season. Yeah, I know. Knowing you. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Easter. Bam, there goes some eggs in there. Uh, Fourth of Christmas. July. Christmas. Red and white. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> trees. Presents. Even find me a little turkey to put in there. <laughs> His name's Bo. Oh. <laughs> I don't think he'll fit in the mailbox, even if it is 26 inches deep. All right. Well, that was interesting and weird. And story, I can't say that word. Interesting. And cool and weird, but yeah, funny. A little bit. All right. Well, we will get into our next segment after this message. I'm Chris. And I'm Deb. And we host a pretty fun podcast called Today We Laughed and Learned. You know, this is where we discuss all the things we should have learned, but, well, never did. And we have quite a few laughs along the way. Today We Laughed and Learned with Chris and Deb. We're curious about everything. Experts on nothing. Come find us wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, this is Molly and Cody, the host of Over the Fence True Crime Podcast. Please join us as we talk about true crime in the most normal place in the world. Over Over the the fence. fence. To be specific, over our backyard fence. We're both moms of humans and of dogs. We live directly next door to each other and share many conversations about life and family, but mostly true crime over our backyard fence. And we invite you to come learn more about true crime and, well, us. We give a lot of attention to California true crime, but have ventured throughout the U.S. and even across the pond and plan to continue our world domination in the near future. Listen to us wherever you listen to your podcasts or give us a follow on Instagram at over the fence underscore podcast. So grab a drink and talk with us over the fence. Well, welcome back to Kathy's favorite segment of our show. Shock therapy. Yes, and I get to play the monkey in this grand experiment. So if you didn't hear us last week, we introduced this segment, and uh, we, where she, (laughs) yeah, so if you think I'm not getting shocked, that's our tone. (laughs) That's what we use for our, our pup downstairs when... He's being naughty. So this goes up way past 10 on the shock, the shock uh, 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 thingy. The button. Button. So we made uh, two tweaks to it. So we're going to start out at five this week. And every for every question, it'll go up two notches. That you get wrong. That Yeah. Well, no, every question. Oh, every question. Every question just... Go oh. up too, so it gives me a little bit more of an incentive to actually get these fucking questions right. Oh, okay. And I need you to hold it a little bit longer than not a lot, Bo, just a little. Bo is actually going to be in charge of hitting the button. Yeah. Okay. So you hit it and let go, because you will just hold that son of a bitch and stare at me like, like, <laughs> like he's cool. down here just giggling away. <laughs> So Again, most, not all, but most of these questions we have touched base on during our past episodes. I think only one we have not gone over in past episodes. Well, I haven't listened to our past episodes in I don't know how long. 
Well, you should get these. A couple of these we actually just went over very recently. I don't have multiple choice, though. So you either get it wrong or you don't. No. Well, well, there was right only one last wrong. week that had multiple choice on it. So No, I had multiple choice for the other ones, but I didn't offer it. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> oh, I got to set my timer. Hold on. Yeah, and I have, what what we set it at? 15 seconds? 15 seconds. So let's make that a little bit better and go to 10 seconds. How's that? We'll leave it at 15. Okay. So you're feeling generous today? Yeah. yeah. Oh, gee, thanks. I'm still trying to get the goddamn thing on my arm. Well, can you help Daddy strap in? Oh, he's an <laughs> old Sparky over here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and the thunder rolls. <laughs> Yeah. And the thunder rolls. <laughs> oh my gosh, maybe I'm enjoying this segment too much. I think you are at this point. This I don't know what I was thinking, saying, yeah, let's do this. All right. <sighs> are you ready? Yeah. All right. <laughs> do I start the time when I start reading the question or After. when I'm done? Okay. What item is banned only during Halloween in Hollywood? Um, mm, silly string. Oh, you got that one right. <laughs> no shocky, shocky. Uh, but we me, still me. go uppy, uppy. Yes, Let we me see still it for go a second, up but... one. Or we should go up two. Let me see it. Oh, you're letting him hold it? Yeah. He'll shock me even if I get it right. He didn't that time. If he, daddy gets it wrong, you hit this button. You ready? What do the colors... Oops, hold on, I reset the... What do the colors black and orange symbolize? Black and orange? Mm Mm-hmm, the Halloween colors, black and orange. Oh. I don't... That's from one of our first episodes. Three, two, one. Yeah. Did you hit it? No. Uh, Fuck. (laughs) I felt that in my toes. <laughs> Hot damn. Orange oh. is harvest and warmth. Black is death and darkness. Okay. So are we ready for our next one? Yeah. What was the candy corn? What was candy corn originally called? Oh, shit. I remember this one, too. Apparently not that well, though. Oh, what was it? Oh fuck! I don't. I I don't remember. All right, Bo. Shotgun. Oh, you did that twice. <laughs> God damn it! Jesus. <laughs> Get your finger off that trigger. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> oh. Hey, oh, don't be trying to read funny. the answers. Give me that. What are we up to now? Eleven. Your mic, because I can hear some humming. Play with my mic. Yeah. Because <clears throat> you can hear some humming. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what are we up to, Bo? What number's on there? Uh-huh. 11. Can you tell me up here? 11. 11? 11, okay. All right. God damn it. What American state is it illegal to dress as clergy for Halloween? <laughs> it starts with an A. I know, I, I know. I don't know. I'm I'm debating on whether or not I should answer or let you shock me. So I'm going to answer answer it and say Alabama. You were cheating. You were looking at my notes. No, I was not. I changed the thing on it, so I turned it up for him. I didn't even see your notes. You were looking right at them. No, I wasn't. How did you remember that? Because we just recently did okay, that was, episode. We did. <laughs> <laughs> what, All right, maybe dang. a month ago. <laughs> dang, Bo, you might not get to shock him again. Here's the next one. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we got one more, don't we? Yes. Oh, fuck, I thought that was our last one. Nope, we got to turn it up. Yeah. But I think Daddy's going to get this one, but I'm going to... No. Yes. No. Yes. All right, you ready? Oops. Yeah. Where do the Ghostbusters set up their headquarters? Like, what city? No. Wasn't it an Two, old uh, firehouse? One. Fire station? Oh! Oh! Fucker! I got that one right! Oh, shit. Actually, he did. That's, he got it just as the... 
knock my goddamn socks off. Like, literally. <laughs> Holy shit. Give it here. We're done. We're done. No. Yes. No. We're done. <laughs> Give it to mom. Give One. It to mom. You lose your tablet. Give it to mom. No. No. I <laughs> got <laughs> Damn, I even got that one right and you shocked me. Yeah, because it was at the last second. I thought you didn't say it. No, I said it. <laughs> no. All right, Bo, thank you. You can go back to your... I'm How are you feeling? That hurt. Oh, fuck not. <coughs> oh, God damn. Y'all don't do this at home? We probably shouldn't be doing it either. No, we shouldn't, but, you know... Just FYI, we do not use the shock feature on the dog. No, we, only we don't. Use the... We've never used the shock feature on it. We've only used the beep. Because that, for some reason, that high frequency with him. that That's enough. That's, Dude, one buzz he, and he's like, okay, I got it. We don't even need to put the collar on him. We can set it literally on the table and just beep it and he knows. So we've never had to use it. Never will use it. So, all right. Well, that was fun. Yes. For you, it was. maybe. But, uh, all right, we will get into our main segment after this message. If you like weird, spooky, and strange history, then I have the podcast for you. My name is Brenda, and I'm the host of Horrifying History. Are you into the dark side of history? Horrifying History tells you about the side of history that people don't normally talk about. We tell the tales of haunted places, infamous true crimes, the paranormal, and unsolved mysteries, and then we look to history to see where the truth actually lies. Want to get spooky with us? Get your horrifying history fix by subscribing today on Spotify, Spreaker, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. All right, we're back. (sighs) So, why does my mic feel all jacked up? Nobody's used it but you. Oh, all right. Well, I suppose. All right. You ready to get into this? Sure. Why not? All right. You want to start? First, I'd like to again apologize to Chris and Deb that we're using these segments, but we will write new ones for when we do our collaboration. Yeah, Promise. absolutely. Yeah, we are. God, uh, I'm being really hard on myself for losing that file. And uh, it was what? About. 11 o'clock this morning when I finally opened the computer and looked at it. And I was like, oh, man. It was earlier than that because I had to pick Reagan up. I was like, shit. <laughs> so I emailed him, got him on Twitter DM, and that is what it is. I mean, what can you do at this point? Hopefully. We will move on. Yep, yeah, move on. and Some lessons learned. Yeah, yeah. Don't let the cat climb on your computer. And, <laughs> yep, we learned some lessons. <laughs> So and we will move on from here. Yep. yep so absolutely. you want me to start? Yeah, yeah. It's just a good thing we didn't throw all our notes out. No, I keep my notes. So, oh yeah, she's kept every every note since the beginning of the podcast. So. Somewhere I have all my notes, but yeah, yeah I yeah. keep them. So, so, all right, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and start. All right, so I'm actually going to cover the Riddle House. Okay. Oh, I'm stuck. There we go. Okay. So the Riddle House was actually located in West Palm Beach, Florida. Originally, it was called the Gatekeeper's Cottage. It was built in 1905. It's a classic Victorian-style architect. It was originally built next door to the funeral parlor as a place for guards to keep a closer eye on the parlor and the cemetery. You know, re-listening to this again... It just dawned on me that a lot back then, a lot of times funeral parlors were ran out of their own personal homes. Seriously. Like, that's the, creepy. Fu- the funeral parlor would be in the front and the house would be in the back. You know, the living quarters would okay, be in the back. Okay, okay, yeah. A lot of times back then, their business was ran out of their house. So, and a lot of businesses were, long- were run that way mm-hmm. early and, on. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, they, the shop was downstairs, they lived upstairs. Yep type thing yep well this was set up according to the information it was set up next door to the parlor or i guess it could have been part of the parlor at the time the house was built looting graves was a big business Mm -hmm. 
when people, wealthy people would die, family members would bury them with their their trinkets, their jewelry. And in order to protect the cemetery and even the parlors before the person was buried, they needed people there to keep an eye on things. So they built the house for that purpose. One of the first ghosts that is part of the history of the Riddle House is Buck. He was an employee at the guard house. While he was in town, he got into a fight with other people from the city and he was killed. After his death, he would be seen wandering around the graveyard. He was also spotted throughout the halls and rooms of the house. But he wasn't a hostile ghost. Basically, he was killed but still continued showing up to work. You find that a lot. You really, really do. Like, they end up haunting the place where they were last at, whether it be a house, their work. There was one that I was looking at for research. Um, it was a uh, ironworks, I believe it was. And a lot of those employees there, that death rate there was very high because it was ironworks. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of the employees that died there ended up staying there and haunting the place. I believe it. Like, they don't know if because their death was so violent or what. Or so sudden that they didn't realize yeah, that. it. They just stayed there. Right. Buck, Buck just didn't realize that he passed. So he would still show up and walk the graves at night, make sure there's no riffraff out there. And wander the halls of the house. This is where he was living at the time. Yeah, yeah. So 20 years later, Carl Riddle was named city manager and was offered the house to live in. This way he could be close to maintain the graveyard. And everybody said that he very much enjoyed what he did. Mm -hmm. He enjoyed living in the house. He enjoyed living near the graveyard. He had just enjoyed his life in general yeah he was he was uh content with his life right at that point. well you know so many people struggle to try to find happiness and yep. contentment and yeah he was just one of those rare people who was happy with what, what he was doing and where he was living and what he was given like seriously uh, you yeah. know a lot of people aren't very happy with what they're given and they just kind of bleh through life yeah and he he's one of the ones that is like yeah no i'm good with what i got Right. Mm-hmm. Sadly, a colleague, I'm not sure if it was a colleague or if it was an employee. Again, it's one of those, depends on what you're reading. Either way, this gentleman ended up committing suicide in the house's attic. This event seemed to trigger an awful lot of negative energy and attention. Visitors to the house would see black shadows from corners of their eyes and hear strange murmurs coming from the attic along with phantom footfalls. They would also hear, like, chains rattling in mm-hmm. their stairway. Not really sure where the chains come from because there's no mention of chains. He hung himself with a rope. Yeah, but there's a movie that I like to watch around Christmas time, right? Mm-hmm. What's the name of that movie? A Christmas Carol, right? Mm-hmm. So they say in that movie, I'm just saying that this is just hypo- hypothetical, for every bad deed or whatever it is that you do, you get a link added to a chain. Oh, okay. Right? That, so, I just thought about that right, like, ding. As I was saying that? Yeah, as you were saying it. So it's like, was, like, for every bad deed or whatever, you have a link added to a chain that is wrapped, that is a part of you after after death. Well, that kind of sucks because that really doesn't work with my whole theory that when I die and I come back as a ghost, that I get a whole new wardrobe depending on the occasion I'm haunting. Yeah, it's going to be chains. Well, Just I saying. was I was kind of hoping that, you know, I have to go to a high-end <laughs> fashion event so I get a high-end fashion gown to wear to haunt at. And make sure or you die if, at Macy's or <clears throat> friggin' Gucci or whatever. Or, you know, I'm coming here to haunt you. I can just put on some leggings and a t-shirt. Or leggings and a t-shirt, seriously. Well, what did you want me to haunt you in a teddy? Nothing. Oh, what okay. the fuck? <laughs> God. 
think we were married or something. <laughs> well, I really hope that that when I die and I come back as a ghost and I start my haunting, that I would get a wardrobe that I could use depending on what event I was haunting. Yeah, that would be kind of cool, though, wouldn't it? Because I really don't want to have to haunt in whatever I die in. An old lady's. Moo moo. <laughs> I don't wear that, by the way. But anyway. Tidy whities and. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy committed suicide in the attic. The main beam that runs the length of the attic, mm-hmm. he hung himself with a rope. Yeah. So I guess your theory, as far as the chain, that's where the chain comes from. Because people, a lot of people report hearing the chain mm-hmm. in the hallway, going up and down the stairs. I mean, it's just a theory. Who knows? It's just a movie I was watching too. So there's probably no validity behind it. But right, the, you know, the and the guy, I guess, ended up in debt and didn't know how to deal with it, and that's why he committed suicide. Oh, jeez. Several employees reported seeing a man in a black suit with a noose around his neck. So that was obviously the the employee. Riddle lost many employees due to this. Riddle actually started suffering from de- depression that many believe was brought on by the dark power that was inside the house after this employee or colleague committed suicide. So a lot of people were like starting to believe like the house was almost a portal and letting in letting spirits through at least the dark energy yeah into yeah. the house and Riddle just did not do well after that. Mhm. Over time Riddle lost ownership of the house. It sounds like he might have moved somewhere else with some other family members. And the house was used for other purposes. Um, Different businesses tried to run out of there. One of the places was actually Palm Beach Atlantic College used the Riddle house as a school's, as a girl's dormitory. Girl's dormitory. Spit it out, woman. Ooh, I just bumped my microphone. Way to go. (laughs) How'd that taste? Not good. (laughs) A little foamy. (laughs) Yeah. So Palm Beach Atlantic College used it as a girl's dormitory for a while. Mm -hmm. But when the school needed to expand and grow, they were going to demolish it. Okay. They were just like, no. I'm, I'm done with it. Right. Over it. Nothing is, it's just not suiting the purpose that we need anymore. I wonder if there was any uh, major sightings of ghosts when it was a dormitory. I did not find anything. I I was hoping to find something. There's some creepy dude looking at me while I was in the bathroom. I mean, there probably was. It might not have been documented, though. Yeah, true, true. In 1980, West Palm Beach... Like I said, wanted to level the building. John Riddle, Carl Riddle's nephew, Mm -hmm. took ownership of the house. He didn't want it to be demolished. It was part of history. It's part of his family. Yeah, he wanted to keep it like most families do, right? And because he was on the board for a, I don't know, um, down in West Palm Beach, we have an area. It's called Yesteryear. Mm -hmm. He was on the board of that. Oh, so, like, a historical board. Thank you. I couldn't think of what there it. There you go. Um, John was part of that historical board, and he wanted to move the Riddle House to yesteryear and add it to the other houses that were out there. Mm-hmm. Everybody was like, you can't. It's too expensive to move the house. We're not going to fit the bill for that. Yeah. So, he decided he was going to cut it into three sections yeah. and move each section individually. And then when it was in yesteryear, put it back together. Huh. You've mentioned this before, like with... Red Onion. Thank you. I always want to call it Oyster, and I know that's not what it's called. Yeah, the Red Onion. They did the same thing. They cut the front off and the back off and flipped them around because they put it up there backwards. They did not do that with this one, but yeah. they did. That's how they moved it. They moved it in three sections mm-hmm. out to the yesteryear village. While they were reconstructing it yeah. out there at the fairgrounds, they noticed a lot of paranormal activity, mostly directed towards men. A local carpenter was the first to feel the wrath while working in the attic. The lid from an iron pot lifted up, flew across the room, and slamming into the back of the carpenter's head. No, thank you. 
carpenters would like leave their tools for the night, go home, do what they need to do, and come back and like all the tools have been sh- thrown out one window mm-hmm. onto the ground. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Uh-uh. But all of it was geared just towards. Metal. I would like, rather no... deal with that one at the. I think it was a Stanley where she liked to spoon with you. <laughs> I would rather deal with that one <laughs> than having shit thrown at me. Uh, seriously, it almost it reminds me. It would was the one that we did Waverly. I think it was Waverly that we did, where they were getting they were they were malicious spirits. I believe it was Waverly, right? I don't think so. One of them was very malicious. I don't think it was Waverly. I'd have to go back. And I don't look. remember which one, but I'm just kind of. I would rather spoon with a fucking ghost than have shit thrown at me. Thank right. You. That, that this this ghost, like I said, it was. It seemed to be a lot of negative energy. Yeah. So they ultimately had to close off the attic, and men were no longer allowed in the attic. I don't blame them. I wouldn't want to go in there either. I fuck. If I'd have known that this house was like this, we would have never went in this house. This is what I was just getting to. Jason and I have actually walked through this house. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things that we would love to do when we lived down in Florida was we would go to the fair. And during the fair, the yesteryear village would be open and you could walk through the old houses that were there. You could look at the old time uh country the, store yeah, like and the throwback shit to way back when and they would do all kinds of reenactments yeah. here so we've actually walked through this house and i did not realize like you that it was haunted when we walked through it yeah if i didn't known that i would never went in there when <laughs> i was looking for this to do this collaboration with chris and deb i just happened to come across this while i was doing research for something else and i was like west palm beach florida what Mm-hmm. And I started reading it. I'm like, oh my god, I have been in there with Jason. Mm-hmm. It's a very beautiful home. It was small. Um, oh yeah, the most stairs of them were very steep. These yep. are just things that I remembered about it, and yep. I remember thinking, I re- these remember... women were out there in their period outfits. Yeah, They're the big skirts with lots of petticoats underneath it. And it, okay, it's hot in Florida all year long. Uh, yeah, and they're out there with these fucking bonnets in their head, the and bonnets, God knows the long what sleeve, else. all these petticoats on, and with a paper fan. And I'm thinking and, and saying to Jason, I would never have survived back then Mm-mm. because no. I wouldn't be able to wear all that clothing. Well, when we were walking through the house, like the flooring in the house had huge gaps in it, so you could literally see right through the floor. And well, now I wonder if that was from ground. when they moved the house. I don't, I don't, it was all throughout the house though. It wasn't just one area. I could see that if they cut it in half, you know, you'd have a little gap there, but this was all throughout the house. Oh, I don't, I don't remember that. And it's like, just think of that at night, you got those bugs and spiders down there. It was fucking, well, we call them banana spiders, but I don't know what they were. Them Huge fucking spiders. Do you picture that coming up through them fucking cracks? Nope. Seriously, like. I could, I, no. Nope. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nope. And if I'd have known this was haunted when we were going through it, I would probably never would have went through it. <laughs> Just saying. I don't, I don't know how I, I don't know how I would have reacted, but yeah, I didn't realize that it was haunted. And I, I was totally fascinated when I saw it. I was like, oh my God, I've been in this house. I even went online and pulled up a picture of it out at the fairgrounds. I'm like, yes, that is definitely the house we've been in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the attic window, people have seen the entity of the man who hung himself, like, looking out the window, like, with this long face, like, oh, mm-hmm. I wish I could leave. I don't know if it's <laughs> that he wishes he could leave, he could live his life, if he could move on. Yeah. He just has a sorrowful look on his face looking out the window. Yeah. There was one article where I was reading where um, a mother and daughter were out at yesteryear to take pictures and do a layout a story on yesteryear itself and they were the only ones out there and this particular house the riddle house was locked so they had to go get the person who was in charge to come open the door so they could walk through the house and while they were waiting they both saw 
a woman standing, not in the attic, but upstairs window, looking out the window in like a wedding dress. Yeah. And the one thought it was, wasn't going to say anything because she thought it was just her mind playing tricks on her. But her daughter described the exact same description of what she was seeing. Mm-hmm. And they both wondered what they were seeing, but there, I didn't find any explanation as to who this woman standing in the window was. It could have been anything. <laughs> yeah. There wasn't any, like, backstory to that yeah. particular sighting. Yeah. Um, just that they, the mother and daughter saw the exact same thing, and they knew that the, the facility had been locked. So it's not like there was somebody else in there mm-hmm. walking around, and they just went out the back door while they were coming in the front door. Yeah. Huh. But that's what I had on, on the Riddle House in West Palm Beach, Florida. Yeah. I thought that was very interesting. So I did too. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Ooh, I've been dying to try this place. Oh my God, me too. I've heard such good things about it. Welcome to the Crime Diner. I'm Cindy. I'll be cooking for you this evening. Here are your menus. Ooh, what are you thinking about getting? I don't know. Murder with a side of cannibalism? What about you? Ooh, that sounds good. I'm torn between historical mayhem and the social injustice, maybe? Oh. I just want to let you know that each episode comes with dinner, dessert, and a specialty drink chosen by yours truly. Wine Dine and Storytime has had a makeover, and we invite you to slide into the booth with us at the Crime Diner, where each week we will discuss a crime over dinner, drinks, and dessert. See you there! All right, well, we'll get into mine. Are you ready? Where are your notes? Right here in my lap. Oh, okay. Jeez, open your eyes. Right here. All right, so... Mine was on Little Mary McNaughton from Jackson, Michigan. How far is that from where you grew up? Oh, I would say about an hour and a half from where I grew up. Two okay. hours, maybe. It was on the other side of Ann Arbor, so more of the mid mid part of the state. Uh, so this takes place at Hillcrest Memorial Park Cemetery in Jackson, Michigan. So, Mary McNaughton was born to Robert and Elizabeth McNaughton on September 5th, 1884 in Jackson, Michigan. She was part of one of the most prominent families in Jackson. Her grandfather, Moses McNaughton, was a Jackson pioneer and doctor. He ended up becoming a wealthy railroad developer and real estate mogul. He was, a sta- he was a state senator when Mary was born and the mayor of Jackson when she was a toddler. So this family was well very off. prominent. Yep. In the summer of 1892, when little Mary was seven, she fled Jackson with her mother, Elizabeth, and three sisters to Brighton, Michigan to escape a de- deadly diphtheria and typhoid fever outbreak, Ugh. which back then that was quite... A common occurrence from just doing research for the show. Right. So while in Brighton, Mary suffered from (laughs) peritonitis, which is an inflammation of the tissue around the abdomen. And what they say is that they think that maybe her uh, appendix burst, which caused this. And back then, the medical field just wasn't what it is now. And unfortunately, she ended up passing away on July 18th. Then the and how fam- old was she? She was seven. Oh. I know, right? It's terrible. When you sit down and you look at it. She could have been saved today with what we right, have. Right, because we just, you actually. Yeah, one of my kiddos had, uh, had an appendix, appendix removed. removed so. You know? so, but anyway. Um... <clears throat> The family ended up returning to Jackson to bury her in the family plot in Hillcrest Memorial Park Cemetery. After her death, Mary's distraught mother, Elizabeth, woke up one night screaming that her daughter was buried alive. She swore up and down that they made a mistake, 
she's still alive we need to unbury her and really nobody was listening to her thought she was just a nut because obviously her daughter just passed right so she's going through all kinds all of kinds emotions of, yeah all kinds and... of stuff and uh to calm her down the cemetery finally agreed to exhume mary's body well when they did elizabeth's fears came true when they seen scratches in mary's coffin lid and to this day visitors claim that mary can be heard crying and scratching the lid of her coffin and some have actually claimed to have seen her hovering over her grave like in an angel state now through the years unfortunately due to vandalism and people going to see this grave um the cemetery has actually blocked off access to the grave site now you can only access it through public tours and i just read though that they have canceled the public tours have been oh they they stopped doing that they now they stopped doing public tours of yep. it and only family members are allowed to do that are allowed to get anywhere near yeah cuz they were vandalizing it so badly that they just they had to put an end to it and uh unfortunately that's that's terrible considering it was a 7 year old child's grave and i mean i get it you want to see if there's something paranormal but be respectful when you do it you know but uh yeah that was the story of mary mcnaughton or little mary McNaughton. and isn't this around the time frame where they started burying people with yeah bells, with bells. on a because on a string just in case yeah because that was actually a common occurrence like they would bury people not knowing that they were still alive like Like, or family members would be like no they're still alive you know we need to give them a way to be able to contact us i wonder maybe that will have to be another podcast but i wonder how many times people were buried and the bells actually went off makes you kind of curious could you possibly be that person say you were riddle that's weird that we both did cemeteries but say that you were riddle at home you're supposed to be protecting the graveyard from robbers Mm -hmm. and you hear that bell go off right (laughs) my heart would fucking sink the panic attack that i would go through not not right the person in the grave (laughs) i would be having a panic attack and how many times did bells go off and it's just the wind so how many times did they unbury people thinking that somebody rang that bell but it it was just the wind coming through like that was a big thing back then that was a huge marketing thing for uh uh oh what's the word i'm looking for for uh funeral directors and stuff with their coffins like that was a big marketing thing that they had going on you can actually go online and find them i think i might have to make this up uh an episode now i think about it like I would not want to be in the cemetery with those bells. And could Mm -hmm. you imagine not just one bell, but multiple bells going off? Right. Like That's it. There's a zombie apocalypse. I'm done. I'm out of here. I mean, back in the 1800s, you go into a coma and nobody would even, they would automatically think you're dead. Like, you're not responding. You're not, you know, they didn't know anything about checking a pulse. So... You wake up from this coma in a coffin six feet underground. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't imagine what Mary went through at seven. Like, I wonder, did they find, like, coffin? Oh, I don't even want to think about that. Underneath her nails. Like, being, working in that industry for five, six years or whatever it was that I worked, like, it just, it, it, mm. It, it gives me chills just thinking about that you know because you're under there so far and back then it was just coffins put in the ground there wasn't anything put them around put around them like they are now mm. you know so like you know that's weird that we both did like cemetery cemetery and, and related. It, it works together like like i said if riddle riddle was at work one night and sitting out on his porch watching the the cemetery and the mm-hmm. bell goes off yeah right like what do you do then (laughs) you know i mean that would scare the shit out of me sorry and then are you up all night 
trying to unbury this person, hoping that they're they're alive, they're still alive. Mm-hmm. Or how many times, like I said, were they unburied and yeah, oh, they're dead. They're definitely dead. Yeah, it makes you wonder. Or an animal walks by and triggers the triggers the bell. The bell. Yeah, I don't know. Makes you kind of curious, though, doesn't it? Like, I'm glad I'm not living back then and being a a caretaker of a cemetery. Like, <laughs> so. No, I definitely won't be able to do it. Mm-mm. There's no way. Nope. I'd be so. having a panic attack every five seconds. Yes. <laughs> like I would I would like just keel over and die from all the stress of it. When the wind blows, you'd be like, What? <laughs> Did ding, you hear ding, that? Ding. <laughs> so. You'd be like, Can you just calm the fuck down? Right. No, I can't. Did you not hear those bells going off? <laughs> like Go that, check would be, it. that that would be <laughs> no. That would be like in my nightmares, like I, I couldn't, there's no way I could do that back then. Because I'd be in your job description, you know. That is your job description. And, it makes, and like you said, it makes you kind of curious. How many times did they undig a grave thinking that the bell went off and it didn't? You know, it just, it, lots of unanswered questions there with that one. So, but that was a common occurrence though, like burying people alive. So. I'm I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit more. And... Okay. Well, you do that then. So, <laughs> you wanna <laughs> that wraps this episode up. Did uh, you wanna let them know where we can be found at? Come check us out at allhallowsypodcast dot com. Um, we're having some technical difficulties on our website right now. Not sure why, but yeah. you can find our latest five episodes up there with links to the rest of our episodes mm-hmm. we're hope, hoping to get them back up on the page here soon you can find links to our merchandise go check that out actually don't they have a sale coming up here soon uh yeah they usually do i usually let everybody know when they are running a sale i'll throw it up on facebook and twitter and okay. it's usually like a 30 percent off that they'll run here and there so keep an eye out for that get some yep. goodies get 16 dollar tees keep your eyes out for that because they do have a lot of good sales that go on and so. the tees and everything from what i've seen are nice quality mm-hmm. and they're holding up well the yep. the bag the tote i really want one of those they're yeah, awesome you drool every time you see the one that renee bought yes i do i'm always <laughs> like i want one the the tumbler that we gave away for our march madness uh we did get a picture from jen the winner oh did we yeah and uh it is a beautiful tumbler it really is it turned out looks really 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 nice why did so, i see this because she sent it to me because i'm more important not nah, just kidding right no i had to ask for it oh. <laughs> i'm like did like, you I'm get a- it yet she's like yeah it's right here click i'm like over here like my feelings are seriously getting hurt like no 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 I, I asked her if she got it, and she sent me a picture. It looks really nice. So Awesome sauce. Yep. And it didn't take long for her to get it either. Yeah, less than a week. Yeah, less than a week. Less than a week turnaround. So, But, uh, yeah, you can find us over there. You can join us, join the fun on our social media sites from there. Uh, we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Facebook. We're all over the place. So, um, yeah, with that, you got a joke for me this Ooh, week. Yes, I do. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on, because that's not the one I wanted. Oh. But I think I deleted it. So we'll use this one. Okay. What's a ghost's favorite game? What? Hide and shriek. Didn't you use that one before? No. Stay spooky, my friends.